Hello everyone and this is lesson 3 in the creating explosions in Houdini series. Okay, so as the name suggests what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to set up multiple explosions. Okay, so this is something that's inbuilt into the pyro burst source. It's quite easy to set up. So this is not a very complicated lesson, but uh, yeah, we'll just take a look at how to set it up. Okay, so to get started, uh, I'm going to create a single explosion and then we'll set up a chain. Okay, now if you're creating a sing single explosion, you don't need a point because when you take a pyro burst source, you will like it'll generate a single explosion on its own. You know, like you will get that. Okay, but since we will eventually feed it into like a chain of explosions, uh, you know, it's better to have the single point because you can sort of move it around. You know, like if you get that, you can you know move that point around. Okay, so we just have this, which is fine. Okay, all I'm going to do is uh, just do a quick setup on this. So I don't, I just want to lower the spread angle a little bit and we'll come into burst components and turn on scale over duration and scale over trailing. So we have this, which is fine. In the output attributes, I'll turn on velocity noise. Okay, and yeah, I think this is, yeah, the rest is fine. We don't need to change anything. So we have, bur uh, it will be generating burn and temperature. So which is good. Okay, now uh, let's take a volume rasterize attributes and we'll just add the burn and temperature and velocity. Okay. And let's get rid of that and let's turn on source name. I still have no idea what source name does, but it does something. So, okay. And then let's take a pyro solver and we're going to block the bottom half and let's plug that in and let's also add in a light. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's just do a basic setup. So um, sourcing should be taken care of itself. We don't have to worry about that. The, I'll lower the flame lifespan to around 0.8. I'll increase the smoke to around 20. We'll do a remap flame. I'll keep it like this. You can play around with this and see, you know, what kind of results you get. And I'll add a little bit of expansion to it. Uh, okay. And then uh, we'll lower or we'll keep the dissipation the way it is. I'll add a disturbance of 10 and a turbulence of around 0.4, let's do 0.5, okay. And let's zoom out and see what we get. So if I press play, there you go, you have like a basic explosion. Okay, uh, let's just, I just wanna change it once. Yeah, okay, this is fine. Okay, now let's also set up the pyro trail. So I'll just type in trail and we'll take in pyro trail. So to generate both the nodes, it takes a little bit of time because I'm guessing they're pretty massive digital assets. So they, they take a little bit of time to sort of, you know, jump in. And what I want to do is uh, let's just make them slightly smaller because this is pretty huge. Like I don't want the trail to be that big. So I'm just going to come in here. We'll increase the drag and I'll lower the mass and I'll lower the trail duration. Yeah, I think this is okay. And in the trail source, you know, that's what we have. I'm going to like lower the radius and lower the point separation and the rest is fine. Okay, so I don't need to do anything there. And then come into trail components and we'll turn on scale over duration and scale over trailing. And I want to add in, uh, get rid of density and we'll add in uh, burn and temperature. So we want burn and we want temperature. And then let's just merge these together. We'll add in the same point here. Okay, and let's press play and see what we get. Okay, now one thing we can do is if we want these to be a little bit you know, uh, thinner. Uh, okay, let's let's do one thing first of all. I just want to lower the drag so they go out a little bit longer. Yeah, and 
what you can do is come into the volume rasterize and lower the particle scale and we'll lower also lower the maximum filter size so this should give me you know like see the trails get thinner see okay, they're not like as big as they used to be so if we press play the one thing you can do is if you wanted to rise higher you can come into the pyro burst and i can just uh we'll increase the temperature let's let's also do one let's increase the burn and let's increase the temperature so that will sort of you know make this explosion go up higher there you go okay. okay so this is good like we have a basic you know very standard explosion setup okay now let's set up multiple explosions so the way it works is we'll pick up a line or you can pick up like you can, you can take a grid and scatter points you can do anything so i'll just take a line and i'll plug it into both over here and what i want to do is we'll point it in the x direction i'll increase the length let's take about four points for now and if you come into the pyro burst source you'll see like they all sort of start at the same time so what you can do is you have different options here okay so one of the things you have is if you come into burst animation like almost with every parameter here you have this drop down which says set uniform set varying we'd seen a little bit of it but what you can do here is you can sort of set an attribute okay so what you can do is uh, uh, you can do you can like if you want to do ra just random you can say set varying and you know that will give you you know that will give you varying so if i just come in here for both and i just say uh, trail generation yeah so i can just come down here to start frame and set it to set varying okay and we have a variation of 3 so hopefully you know they both have the same seed value so they both should generate the same thing if we press play see there you go okay so if you look at the explosions now with just that much it should be you know something different if you want like more gap between them we can try to adjust it here so i can take this variation and let's make it like 6 for both and that might give me see so you'll get like a you know more of a gap between the explosions yeah so you can do that now let's say if you want to do it like one after the other in like a sequential order so what you can do is you can use an attribute okay so you come in here and you can say use attribute and what it's looking for is like if you don't know what it's looking for Okay so what you can do is click on this little dice over here and what this does is it creates uh it creates an attribute at just float node and it tells you the attribute it's looking for so the attribute it's looking for is called start frame okay you can also keep the mouse on this and that should probably show you the attribute name as well see there you go so the parameter is called start frame so that's the attribute you need to generate but of course we don't want to create this okay but you just need to know the name right so you can just copy that So I'll get rid of this, and instead of this, I'll take a wrangle. And even in the trail path, I'll set it to use attribute. Okay, so in the start frame. And what you can do here is let's just you know stick to this, and I can say f at start frame is equal to at pt num. So based on the point numbers, it will show you you know the explosions will start sequentially. So if I press play. See, so you'll get them, you know, one after the other. Now, if they're happening too fast, uh, we can just sort of give it more of a gap. So let's do multiply by four. So you'll get that. Okay, so that's you know straightforward. So if you press play now, you'll get this. If you want the smoke to stick around longer just lower the dissipation. Like right now the reason why I've kept the dissipation high is because you know it's less to calculate the smoke disappears faster. But there you go. You know so you know the longer you want the duration the more gap I can keep so let's make it around like 7. So there'll be like a gap of 7 frames between each explosion. yeah so you can do this okay now let's say if you also want the the size to get bigger 
Okay, like we want smaller, so as the name says, like you want to go boom, boom, kaboom, you know, like you want to go like smaller and then bigger, bigger and bigger. So what you have is you have the initial size and you can come in here, uh, that, will, that will be there in both, right? Like in the trail path as well, you'll have initial size. So what I can do is I can take the pyro burst and uh, we can set it to use attribute and the one it looks for is P scale. You know, like if you keep it here, it doesn't show you what, what it wants. But as I said, like just click on the little dice and it shows you what it's looking for. It's looking for P scale. Okay, so, but we don't want that. So what we can do is take the line and add a resample because we need the curve U attribute. Okay, so just take this, turn off the length segment. So you just have this, the same number of points that are coming in and turn on curve U. Okay, so just drop that in the middle. So like you'll have a new attribute here called curve U. Okay, and then in the attribute angle, I can just take this and say at p scale is equal to, we'll set up a ramp. So we'll do ch ramp and we'll call it uh, size, comma at curve u. And what this should do is if I press play here, you'll see, see, you'll see them get bigger. So we'll start off, like, let's say we start at 0.5 and we end at around two. Okay, so that might be a little too big, but there you go. And the same thing will automatically affect the trail. Uh, you just take the initial size and set it to scale, set it to use attribute. Okay, if you set it to scale attribute, you get like an additional multiplier on top of it, which is not bad. Okay. Like you get the same thing here as well. So if you want to like further have control, this is a nice way to do it. Okay, and if we press play now, this is what you'll get. So you get the first one and then the second one and you know, by the time we get to the fourth one, it should be fairly big. Like we could try, like then you can try to shape it, you know, like maybe I can take this here. Like let's say you want the last one to be massive. So I can probably take this and let's make it three. Might not, that probably won't be a good idea, but see, there you go. There's the last one. Okay, that's, that's a little too big. Let it, let it calculate. So there you go. See, so if you want to create like, you know, like small explosion, small explosion, big explosion, you know, so you can sort of do that with this. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, so you, you can then feed in whatever you want. You can feed in like scattered points, you can feed in particles if you want to, like, you know, whatever you want, you can sort of, you know, feed it in, it should be, it should work. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, this was a fairly simple lesson. It's not, you know, anything overly complicated. I think this more or less completes, you know, the basics of how to create explosions in, in Houdini. Uh, if I come up with anything else that's at a basic level, I'll try and do that. But I might do, you know, something a little more complex for my Patreon. So if I do something like that, you know, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it.